three, two, but one, zero. I am not well versed in the alien gambit, but I do know what it is thanks to um, someone else in the chat. C4, okay, wait, speaking of which, though, let's play an alphabet gambit. Let's play A6, B5, fun stuff, and 5-0 in the first game of this arena. This is a hard gambit to decline, or else B4 bothers your knight, right? So here, now we take dull center. It's Banco style, in that we lose these A and B pawns for the C pawn. However, check this out. Look at the center we take. Really nice. If D4, yeah, we play E4, so I really, really like this for a few reasons. One, we have no weaknesses. Two... King can't castle this way. We have too many files here. And, okay, g3, really weird move. Uh, we got a couple options. We got bishop a6. I kind of want to see what they do. I'm going to play h5, looking at h4. If they play h4, now they're going to have even more weaknesses. That makes sense. So h4, they can meet with g4. Okay. Couple options here. Couple options. Let's play bishop d6. I think that's where we're going regardless. Bishop comes to g2. Okay. Now... I want to come here. But if I play an 86, there's an 82. Maybe I should have just played an 86 before. An 84, and they'll make it out alive. So, that doesn't mean it's a bad idea. Bishop a6, an 82. Something else I can do is try to target h3 so that they can't really castle. But okay, let's play an 86 and walk this knight to b4. Another nice thing about this is there's no a3. Knight can land on b4 regardless because uh, of the pin on this a3 pawn. Um, sorry, e takes f4, knight f3, g5, h4, g4, knight g5. Nice. Yeah, in general, um, I don't think black players should be playing pawn takes f4 or pawn takes f5s unless they really know what they're doing. Uh, with those sorts of things, you can just kind of play bishop c5 and d6 uh, and just support your center is my recommendation because or else you give them exactly what they want with like takes and they can take the center and then there's some sharp stuff so i would definitely not play that with the black side uh, um i would assume my opponent knew that much better than i so here my opponent is playing this nady two bishop g2 which is a strange setup because the bishop kind of fires into nothing these pawns are very solid now we're targeting h3 and they're in a tough spot because king h2, h4, and now we got a pin. There's not going to be g4. They, uh, of course, they want to push past here and not allow anything to open up. But, yeah, with, with this structure, it really gives black a lot of opportunity to attack on this side of the board. So, okay, we got a lot of options here. Knight can walk into this beautiful outpost. We could just play something normal like knight f6 and maybe look at that outpost. So knights could be here and here both just living there forever, putting pressure on f2. Or we can try and play this a little faster. Try and play g5, takes h4, try to play bishop h3, try and knock him out quick. What do we think? f6, g5, also logical, kind of like supports that. My concern is if they want to play f3. Okay, I'm just going to go for this. g5, h4, let's go. Let's attack. Let's see what they got. I think it was most logical probably to like play knight before and continue to prove my position because I'm not sure white had a lot of great things they could have done. Okay, here's knight a4. They're trying to get knight b6. Interesting to look at giving that rook. Knight b6, queen, f5, takes a8, takes g2. Well, actually, okay, wait. Let's go takes h4. This is very not necessary. I could just not hang rook b8. This move might just be the best choice to just kind of slide over here. Yeah, let's do that. Um, okay, rook b8. Just not hanging this. And we're going to resume focus on trying to play bishop h3, h4. Okay, this is bothersome. Now though, wow, okay. I can take this with the bishop if I really want to just take h4. Um, I can also just grab my pawn back. I guess, can they survive with the knight on g3? I'm So okay, I'm gonna take this. 
Dark Square Bishop did a good job, but I think we have even more effective things. So let's take h4, which should be very damaging here. And the other thing I can do is play knight takes c5, and this knight will land on d3, like we had always talked about. So queen c2 coming, but oh my goodness, they have opened this g file. So let's try and get him there. My development could be a little bit better. Like an a of six where g8 would be even better, but g file can really get him. For example, if they just kind of like take and then just try and focus over here, I'm just going to go knight of six. Like if they take the rook, just for example, rook g8 is just like checkmate. So yeah, this file is brutal, and I'm very surprised they played knight d4 instead of playing knight g3. Uh, okay, so here's f4. So I'm going to take it before they can even play rook f2. I mean, rook f2 is not even that great of a defensive resource, but I'm going to take it regardless. Because rook f2, I have knight d3 with tempo. This was my point. Okay, here is... Oh, knight f6 kind of blocks this resource even. Um, okay, I'm going to play knight f6 though. So here comes rook g8 check, and we're just going to try to infiltrate here. King can try and run away there, but we have knight d3. We kind of control all over the board. And I'm not even down a pawn. I'm not even down a pawn. I mean, this king is looking pretty barren. Pieces aren't looking good other than this knight. Remember, nothing here has activated. So it's looking like our attack was pretty effective, and we've done a good job controlling, and controlling almost the whole board throughout this game. Tough to hang on here if you're white, because g file is going to come, and then the queen's going to come. And I also have this rook operating. I have my knights, which can hop into squares at a moment's notice. And my king's been in the center, but there's been no pieces to bother me. Like, something like this could have bothered me, but there was never really the time to do it. So here's rook h1 to try to cover against queen h3. Try and play like king f1. So that's an idea. All right, we're going to hop in regardless with knight d3. Cutting against king to f2. That's a beautiful square for a knight. And leave c5 as an option against, say, like any queen c2. Also any queen c2. Queen g4 check should kill. All my pieces are operating really, really well. And to have this kind of attack and not even be down a pawn is really quite something. So, okay, rook g8. Lots of resources here, including knight g4. Seems like a good one. G3 made a lot of sense to try and slide it around there. Uh, okay, now I think C5 is a good idea because this knight has no great squares. Probably has to come to C2. After which, let's come in with the other knight. Something I can do here is rook B6, rook here. I think that's a kind of an interesting idea to really use all our pieces. So here comes knight. Yeah, let's go in. So they're trying to open that up as well. So we're attacking the rook here. But yeah, here comes this rook coming across. And we're, re yeah, everybody's, everybody's involved. And my pieces are looking brilliant. All of them. Just doing great, great work. We've just been improving all our pieces all game. And we're threatening rook g1 now. Looks kind of unstoppable. Now, this was a game with no crazy sacrifices. I mean, I played a gambit on, on move two, but um, no crazy sacrifices. What do we got here? Uh, check. Come back there. Oh, queen b5 was the most effective, wasn't it? Queen b5 should have been played, certainly. Okay, we only got seven seconds. Uh, check. I think like knight takes a four check. That's mate, isn't it? Yeah. Oh no. Wait. Oh no, queen of one is mate. Where's the mate? That's mate. Nice. Wow, what a game.
Got him with 0.7 seconds. Okay. <laughs> that was a crazy, that was a crazy game. I'm going to have a look at that. Got him with 0.7 seconds. All right, we're, we're running the analysis. I think, I think that was good. I think that was, I did a good job there of improving all my pieces. Um, and just getting them slowly, slowly, slowly. Uh, what do we got here in terms of accuracy? Had a couple. I'm sure I had a couple of blunders there at the end because I didn't checkmate the most efficient way. But okay, so let's talk about the opening while this runs. So a6, funny move, right? Um, I mean, so with a6, I mean, we have a whole repertoire that I covered in my original video. So like if g3, for example, we're not going to play b5 and just hand them this tempo. We're going to play e5. And we're going to use this as an important storage square for the bishop. And I have a nice game here, also on my channel, where I beat uh, I am in this line with bishop c5, d6. And it's helpful to coming back to a7, and then uh, we can see how to attack from there. In this game, though, my opponent played knight c3, so we can always make a6 a useful move, like d4, e6. Like this is a very valid line, for example, a6 in this position. Or, of course, here you could play a wagon gambit if you like with b5 coming next. But e6, d5 is a useful move, trying to play d takes c4 and d5, uh, supporting that pawn with a6, supporting this whole chain. In the game, a c3, b5, and this is a very hard gambit to decline. a c3 is by far the most common move uh, because it's very natural for English players to follow that up with knight c3, and it seems to control this. But now, like, b4 is coming. is really quite bothersome. So typically they take it, and now d5, and now we're going to take a huge center. What is one way to stop that, which is this move d4, but this is also covered in my video where we play c6, attacking the knight, knight comes back e5, and if white ignores this, so something like e3, e4, this is, oh, will transpose to the game. Pawn coming to e4 is going to lead to very, very strong attacking possibilities, which um, th this game demonstrated. And if they take it d4 and we can continue harassing this knight and lots and lots of fun lines where we use this open file, uh, white has not really made any move on this whole half of the board and black development here is very rapid and we can really keep harassing this knight uh, which has now had to move all over the board so many times and it's going to have to move again because h4 it's actually going to be out of squares. So um, r really, really fun, interesting lines. My opponent did not play d4 in the game. They played e3, also taking like some stake in the center. So we drive the knight back, now play e5. So okay. How do I evaluate this? Well, so my opponent now plays d4 and e4. Okay, we're down a pawn. It's like a French-like structure, right? W like a reverse French structure, where we have this, this, nice pawn chain here. c6 is the base of the pawn chain. It's in theory the only thing that can be attacked, but very, very difficult to attack. It's already supported. You can put a rook there, but what else are you gonna do? I can just put a bishop on d7 and really nothing else. So with th this uh, comes a couple other benefits of my position. Number one is these files. So king cannot really cast along because I can put rooks on those files. Number two is that bishop a6, I can trade off for what is the bad bishop because I have like a light square center pawns for the good bishop because they have dark square center pawns. Light square center pawns can limit my bishop a little bit. Although, you know, with the space advantage comes, you know, still diagonals. But yeah, bishop a6 or like knight a6 or even both. Bishop a6 and then recapturing knight takes a6. So with knight a6, what can happen there is knight b4. There's no a3 to take that away because uh, the pawn on a3 will always be pinned due to this rook. So then with knight b4, a lot of good things can happen from there, including landing a knight on d3, as you saw in this game. But like, for example, with bishop e2, you can play this with bishop a6, here takes, takes, and knight b4, knight d3 can come. a3 does nothing, knight b4, there's a pin, knight d3 check can come. So things like that. Also, ideas like queen g5, attacking this g2 pawn, and then knight f6, h5, bishop d6, h4. Really, really nice attacks here where black has really nothing to worry about because they rip the whole position. You know, the, the king side is ours because we have this, which points to the king side and allows us to uh, use this diagonal, use all these squares. And the center is ours because we just have more space here. And the queen side also, you know, we have all these resources on the queen side. So really, we control all aspects of the board really well. So my opponent played g3 preliminarily uh, against queen g5 uh, and, you know, just trying to fill a bishop there. So here comes h5 trying to play h4, just trying to ask some questions, see how you, you respond to this. If you play h4, now you hand me this square. My knight can live there forever and put pressure on f2. My bishop can live there right now. So h4 causes some issues. So h3 was played in the game. The engine liked h4 a little bit better. And already here, well, so the evaluation of this position is plus 0.3 and already minus 0.4, uh, just to communicate that. And already here, minus 1.1 with h3. So with bishop d6, so I don't want to play, so the point of h3 is that h4 you can respond to g4. So, and um, they didn't want to play h4 and hand me this square, although the engine says they should have. So h4, yes, they can respond to g4 and kind of keep things shut for now. But if your king's going to be there, I mean, I still have resources like f5 to open that up. So 
But anyway, bishop d6 for now, and we're thinking about maybe some sacrifices at some point. So here comes bishop to g2, and knight to a6. So already a nice move. Knight to a6, we're taking advantage of no a3. My knight can come to b4 no matter what, and we're looking at that skill. So I have, I'm keeping my options open about how to develop, and I'm not too worried about like, okay, h5 is not consistent with castling, but I'm not too worried about that. I don't think there's really any way for black for, for white to get to uh, my king. There's no f3, which would be their only break in the position. It would hang g3. So they play knight e2, bishop f5. Okay, not the best. Engine wanted here. h4, g4, f5. <laughs> Coming after them that way. Knight b4, also a very logical idea, just trying to land that knight on a very sexy square. So knight to e2, bishop to f5, whatever. It's a developing move. Engine wanted a pawn to be there to support h4 and to shut down g4. So cast, bishop f5, castles, and queen d7. My point here with bishop f5 was to ask um, major questions of my opponent on h3. So what white should have done is tried to take advantage of the fact that my king's in the middle uh, and tried to play f3. So even though they're losing this, they're, they're opening the center somehow, like takes and like, you know, open this, try and play e4, try and get my king there. Because I've played on principle, my king is in the middle. If you can open the center, you should do that, and especially in a blitz game. It's just like, oh, king in the center, no clear spot to castle, no like there or there, try, just try and get to it. But instead, my opponent um, plays h4 to deal with that, and g5, which is uh, apparently not the best. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was the best. I, I think I was kind of saying something uh, to that effect in the game. Knight f6 makes a lot of sense. Uh, so this knight will come to g4, this knight will come to b4, this knight will come to d3. Oh, look at that. Knights will just live there. There's not going to be f3 because there's going to be so much pressure here and here. Uh, yeah, knight will live there. Knight will live there. And then g5 can come at a moment where, you know, I can support it. I really grip the whole board really well. And we're looking on f2. So, yeah, really, really nice position here for black where white has just holes all over their position with these pawns locked on dark squares. And the light square bishop not doing a ton to cover it. And, uh, yeah, really hard to move these pieces. You can play bishop d2 or c1, but it's not really clear what that's actually going to do for you. In the game g5 and knight to a4. So the, the bet, so the reason g5 was a mistake was actually not h takes g5, h4, and here black's in business. The move that white needed to play, this is very, very, this is a very, very instructive point. The move that white needed to play was f3. f3, taking command of my king. I have a king too. I have a king too, and th my opponent needed to play this move f3 to open this rook, open this bishop. Like now all of a sudden takes like takes e4 oh look at this look at this look, my king is in the middle i can't castle here and be safe at all uh in fact there's really nowhere clear for my king to be safe and maybe i don't know like 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 i'm on castle they can get to me before i get to them but at minimum like you have to play f3 you have to like you know try to cause issues for me because otherwise i'm just attacking and white is just suffering until i finally get to their king which is uh what happened um Eventually in the game, although with 0.7 seconds on my clock, we'll see uh, how I probably could have done this much better. So knight a4, they're trying to come up with some counterplay here, but there's a difference between counterplay and just like a one-off threat. Here, I just like dodge this like one thing. Uh, oh, oh, so g takes h4 was better. <laughs> just knight b6, just allowing this. Knight takes a8. Oh man. And uh, was queen e6 best? Queen d8 takes h3 here h4 wow <laughs> so we just allow them to take this rook but they have no other pieces in the game and yeah wow we're just gonna get to this king with queen g5 knight f6 and uh wow we're just gonna crash through here h2 check is gonna force the king to g2 and there's gonna be some kind of like bishop h3 check mating resource there so pretty nice stuff but yeah this is what i'm saying there's a difference between counterplay and just making a one-off threat like yes you you threaten knight b6 i deal with that now you have nothing now you have nothing, right? But if you have lots of pieces in the game, like let's say you have bishop d2, and you had a3, b4, and rook b1, queen b3, you play b5. Okay, now you're undermining this pawn. Now you're threatening queen takes d5. Or you're playing f3, right? Which is like the idea they should be doing. But I was just trying to keep the example on the queen side. Counterplay requires pieces. It requires threats that can't be defended, right? It, it requires overwhelming the opposition. It requires more offensive resources than defensive resources. That's not the case here. You're just playing knight a4. You have one threat. I guess you're hoping I blunder it. And it's even, it's it's not even a good trap because if black falls into it, uh, this is actually minus two. So um, I unfortunately I played at rook b8, which is only minus one. But uh, I, I know qualms about rook b8. It did its job here on the file. It has no a3 pin uh, regardless. And I'm definitely not castling long in any 
um, scenario. So I was happy to just play rook b8 and leave my queen flexible, although I should have just played takes h4 and really, really just gone for it in, in that line. Uh, yeah, so the reason g5 was bad wasn't because of, oh, black's being too aggressive. It's because white has a strong counterpunch. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. So they had f3 there. So knight a4, rook b8. Yeah, this isn't counterplay. This is just one threat. You still have all your pieces that are bad. You cannot make counterplay when all your pieces are bad. So knight c5. Okay, trying to make something happen. I take it and take h4. So the reason I take with the bishop is because it takes. Now my bishop is hit and I really want to like take h4 here. Uh, as good, uh, like this was also, of course, very, very playable. And in fact, bishop e5 is even better. Don't even care about the pawn. Just stay on this powerful diagonal. Takes h4. Still very strong. Rook's going to be good. And what we want to do here, the ultimate attack is going to be with bishop h3, whatever, and just making moves. And then we trade off for that bishop, takes g3. This is the standard way to attack a fianchetto. You play h5, h4, you take it. That's going to open the rook here uh, by h5, h4. So, so like with a fianchetto, there's a hook for you to play h5, h4, take that. Then the light square bishop comes in, trades off for the fianchetto bishop. And now after all that, you have queen to h3 check supported by that, and that can checkmate the enemy. You can't. So there needs to be two trades. There needs to be a bishop to h3, and there needs to be a pawn on h4, and then you take, you take, and the queen will land on h3 for uh, checkmating ideas. So that's what I'm looking at. But even stronger, I thought, was taking here and taking h4. So here we go, and um, my opponent recaptures on h4, which is a huge mistake. And what they needed to play, again, you guessed it, was f3. Trying to make something happen. Just, like, like, you cannot be suffering the whole game. You cannot just be trying to defend not only is it completely impractical and like your opponent is just going to be totally relaxed and can just do whatever they want until they eventually roll you over, but it's also not even, 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 even Stockfish is saying, I can't defend this position. You need to fight back. You need to fight back. So if you're ever in doubt, fight back, go for it. Cause them, cause your opponent problems. This is what you got to do. So my opponent recaptures on h4. Um, so that's, that, that's the reason this wasn't the best, actually, takes, and he takes h4, is because white had the f3 resource here. It's minus 0. 0.6, but it's better than nothing. They're still losing, but it's better than takes. Uh, I called this nothing because this file is going to kill them. So I played knight takes c5, which was not the best at all. Oh, it was just a huge blunder. They have queen d4, attacking the rook, attacking the knight. Wow, because there's no longer a pawn there. So they actually do have a resource in this position. And yeah, I have a couple unprotected things. Wow, this is why I always take stock of your enemy's unprotected pieces. Because if, if you're white here and you just go boom, 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 unprotected, 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 yet you'll find resources like this. And if you're black, also, same same, same idea. And also with queen d4, yet now that I also tap this, there's also queen e5 check, so there's really no defending all this. Yeah, queen d4, out of nowhere, off the top rope, there was queen d4. So here... Yeah, black should just be playing like an 87, rook g8, bishop h3, and knocking them out that way. Whoops. Uh, and also, like, this knight can come to h4. So, yeah, off the top rope, there was queen d4. Missed by both of us very badly. My opponent put a knight on d4. Terrible choice. Now it's minus 4. And finally, here, I start playing better and will not relinquish this advantage. My king is safe. This is all locked up. Let's play bishop to h3. Let's get rid of the last defensive piece. Let's put rook on g8. So, f4 which to me was a logical defensive resource. The engine is saying knight to e2 was best. Uh, knight should be there to try to play, get to g3, try to do something. Of course, I can still crash through that. Um, one way of many is just eliminating that h4 pawn and then playing h4, after which we can use that g file. Or also the fact that I don't need to knock him out that quick and I can just play knight f6, knight d3, and uh, I'm not even down anything. And so, uh, uh, yeah, we can land knights on these really, really nice squares, looking at f2, looking at... Uh, a number of resources there. So knight e2 also, yes, threatens queen d4, so I should play here. So there's like knight e7, so there's queen d4, we have rook g8, some punch like that. And yes, yeah, so there's no queen e5 check also, uh, which would have won my rook. So yeah, these are resources we got to be aware of. They can come out of nowhere. Okay, f4 makes some sense, trying to introduce a possibility, run with the king, and also rook f2. Rook f2 is not something I wanted to allow. If I just like moved my knight, then rook f2, and if they were able to play rook takes g2, then maybe they could you know, try to defend this. So I took now and then just played this. It's a very simple knight to f6. And this is a dream position. Not down anything. Knights have gorgeous squares that they can take. Rooks, beautiful, beautiful files. King cannot be touched. Queen doing a great job just defending this. Can come to this file to take that pawn. Also this diagonal, another good one. And white's got nothing. No files for their rooks. King totally torn open. Uh, and a dark square bishop that just runs into nothingness. And I've got my pawn back. We each have five pawns. 
So rook h1 made sense, and it hangs on, because, uh, or else they can lose just very quickly. Because check, and the queen can just come to h3, which can just knock them out right away. Like here, queen h3, uh, and with checkmate to follow. And king h2, knight g4 check, and uh, like knight takes e3 with queen h3 to follow. So this is what they had to do. Uh, rook to h1 was very necessary, holding on to the square. So knight comes into d3, trying to take away their uh, option to run away. So knight d3, very nice square. D3, I don't know, makes sense. Uh, I guess I had this on the other side of the board also. So rook g8 check, king f1. And uh, so not obvious how to knock him out right away because my queen, I don't want to trade queens, of course, and no queen h3, but let's just continue to improve all our pieces. So here comes knight to g4 coming in, threatening a fork. Why not? Queen to e2 and c5, another nice move. C5 and the knight has no squares other than c2. So driving their one good piece back. And yet another nice move was rook b6. So these continue to be all the engine moves, and we're up to minus 7 at this point. So rook to b6, yeah, the rook was doing nothing. Uh, when in doubt, like, like yeah, I was looking at this, knight of 2, rook h2, like, oh, can I get to g1? Like, can I can I stack here? But okay, I mean, you, you, this kind of unravel for you t quickly if they can get, like, two knights for your rook. There's no queen h3. Like, there's no knockout blow right away, or there's nothing obvious. So just chill. Improve your pieces. Improve your pieces. So I improved this knight. Got the, you know, like, all my pieces are on the best square they could be, except this rook. So rook b6, nice resource, coming across here, and now their rook g1 ideas came in. So bishop to d2 was played, which makes sense. What else are you going to do? Engine's recommendation was here, <laughs> literally, um, which just offers that. Uh, even though that's somehow not even the best move, that's how bad uh, white's position is. So bishop to d2, knight to f2. Hitting the rook, rook to g1 is going to lose pretty quickly. Takes, takes, rook g6, and queen to h3. Checkmate. So, in fact, like, it literally is checkmate, right? Like, like it's just crazy how good these knights are, uh, just controlling every square uh, <laughs> deep in enemy territory. So rook h2, rook g6. So now there's no takes f2 because we're threatening mate here, but my opponent hangs on. So queen takes h5. Wow, I'm still doing everything right. Check king e2. Yeah, so I played rook g2 and then immediately was like, I should have played queen b5. So, yeah, the king is running away. And we, so we need this resource queen b5 to get him from the other side of the board. I eventually play queen b5, but um, yeah, so, so, so I mean, this is killer. We're threatening mate takes a four check, which at minimum should win the queen. Um, but yes, we introduced that discovered attack and the king has no squares. And uh, here, okay, rook takes g1 is not even the best move, but here, so we, we cover queen e5, and also with queen h8, there's no more checks, and checkmate is soon to follow. So king e2, I played rook g2, which changes it for the evaluation from mate 9 to minus 6. Rook h1, so they should have just recaptured, but it's all very losing for them anyway. Rook h1, we're, we're just in a blitz out here. My opponent has a minute, I have 7 seconds. Queen b5, I finally do something right. Uh, so now we're, we're trying to make some knight move. Uh, the king has no squares, right? The king actually has no squares at this moment, but any knight move gives them that square. So it's like, it's like a game of Tetris, kind of. I'm still trying to take here to win the queen. So here comes knight a3 targeting my queen. Queen a6 makes a lot of sense, but here we have mate in 4, and I actually find it. It is knight takes f4, double check. Double check, so that requires a king move. There's no takes with double check. So king to e1 is the only move. Rook to g1 check. King takes f2. I actually had checkmate in 1 here. It was with queen to f1. <laughs> it was with queen to f1 sneaking down there. That is checkmate, because uh, the rook does not control. Remember, so when it's like this, you can't play rook f1 because it takes, but you always have that resource of going check because they can never, right? Because even though it's like, oh, it's attacked twice, you know, it's like, it's a nice little resource because that's obviously not legal in chess. Uh, I, I, I always, since I was a little kid, thought that was cute. Uh, so yeah, rook g1, yeah, so takes, takes, this changes nothing. We have checkmate, and I think that's similar to what happened in the game, right? They went takes, I played check, and then only after they took, did I find queen to f1 check, queen to g3 takes. Oh, thank God that was mate. <laughs> um, wow, crazy, crazy position. We defend the knight here, which defends h3, so we got him. But it was winning the whole way, but crazy, crazy stuff. So really, really fun game here in the alphabet gambit. Um, big fan of it. Big fan of it. Just playing a6. Most people play an a3, and then b5, take, take, d5. And there's a lot of, like, um, force lines here that can just, like, kind of, like, win the knight or, like... Um, win right away that you can fall into that's also covered in the original video but um i kind of stopped in like this position in the original video and just talked about some ideas to attack and so i'm happy here that we got a good example of actually 
um, using all your pieces and using black's really, really nice position to get an attack. So yeah, I like this one. Thank you, thank you, Resting Forest. Subscribe if this one goes on YouTube. Um, cool, let's go back. We're chilling. Sorry for that long detour there. I just kind of saw an opportunity for a YouTube video because I liked that game. It was a fun one. We got way back in this arena because I spent a long time on the analysis. Oh, I appreciate that. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking to a wall. Especially when it, on my pre-recorded content, right? I'm like, I don't know how long I'm rambling on for. I really appreciate that. Lee Mate Mail, sounds like you're signing off. Take care. H3, funny move. Uh, should I play f5? I'll just play an f6. We'll just transpose this to an Italian. b3 h6 oh awesome you're sticking around uh bishop e3 so it looks like they're casting long all right i'll take it and we'll castle short oh they're also casting short uh, let's go to a5 they never move this pawn i think i can make this trade happen knights here are very stupid uh on the side of the board unless they're making unless they're trading themselves so you better be sure that the bishop cannot dodge you in this case, I'm sure. Bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, b5, bishop b3, and I will take it. So knight h2, trying to unleash this. Let's take that. Try to cause some issues for their structure over there. Um, something that might make sense is knight d7, a c5 maneuvery. Let's play bishop e6 first, target this. b3 should be played. And, yep, let's go here, bring the knight to c5, play a5. Knight should hang out well on this uh, artificial outpost of sorts, targeting right there. Mm -mm. They can come back to f6. Okay, let's come back here in ac5. Pressure here, no in ad5, because of the pressure here. And nice move here, a5, take away b4. This knight's chilling. And something I might play next is queen g5. Okay, queen g5. Take away any ideas they have to attack. Their queen is in a bit more aggressive post than mine. No. They declined my offer. Okay, we're going to look at this idea. Let's slide back for the moment. Looking at ideas of playing a 5. Target c2, perhaps. I like their username, Forked again. Pretty slow position, but we've been doing a good job, I think, of improving our pieces. Slowly, slowly. Tried to take away knight d5 there in view of the pressure here, but they might still have knight d5. Okay, I'm going to play f5. The one thing that was doing nothing was our rooks, and that's because I had all eight pawns blocking all eight files. So let's make a pawn trade that our rooks can use. I want to play rook takes f5, and I want to bring the other rook here, and I think that's a file I can use. So... Got a couple options. Rook takes, I think, is good. Knight's doing a great job here, guarding b7. And making a Jamaican patty nice <laughs> with jerk sauce. Queen e2. Like I said, swing this guy into the game. And I think we're doing a good job just improving all our pieces. Everybody looks good. We've done a good job with everybody. We'll see what comes next. Uh, bishop takes f5, I guess they just have e4. As fun as it might be to target this. I'm kind of surprised about the way they're playing. Good job with this. Uh, e4. Let's land our queen on g3. Seems like a good way to improve it. And we're threatening bishop takes h3. Because that knight is... Uh, it would overload this pawn. If I could take that knight. So that's a good threat we have. No knight e4, thanks to this guy. And nice artificial outpost we made here, no b4. Structure solid. What are our next ideas? Like let's say rook f1 to take away this. Uh, something that could make sense is this. e4 is an interesting move. Knight moves, trade, take e3, 
could make sense. I guess I just need d2. I have to take h3 right now. Let's go here. Let's just go here. e4 might have made a lot of sense there, but I'm kind of not sure. Let's just keep improving. Take bishop g6. We got this pin threatening e4 because that rook is hanging. Bishop h5 probably made more sense. Maybe six, maybe four. I liked better. Okay, my pieces are certainly my bishop's certainly better, but not obvious how to win. Take away c five. Trying to enter somehow. We got a lot of light square pawns here, which should be good. Nice targets for my bishop. I'm trying to defend g4. Oh, I think taking king g4 now. Now that they don't have pawn takes d3, I think we're just winning with this and this. Should be very fast. And here, yeah, it takes a long time to create a pass pawn. I'm very quick. Just uh, cover against move tricks Take check go e3 yeah let's go with this pawn Remove trick. We got him. I always like that pattern with two queens. They always mate like that when they're uh, that far apart. They can mate anywhere in the board like that. Nice, nice, nice. 